The following program is an OCA Media Community Produced episode of Oregon Life. And we would like to thank our sponsor, the Oregon Brooklyn Optimist Club. We are proud to have you as a sponsor. I'm Frank Caruso, producer of Oregon Life, and welcome to a brand new episode. Are you wondering why I'm holding basil? Well, I'll tell you. So I'm helping out the Oregon Rotary Club, and I get to talk to Bill Rockwell. And I said, Bill, what do you do when you're not doing the, uh, the Oregon Rotary? And he goes, I grow basil with my wife, Betty. And he does indeed. So I'm in the grocery store, and there it is, Glenway Gardens selling basil and a variety of other herbs which are amazing so we're going to go on a journey with bill and betty glenway gardens and see how they produce their herbs especially the basil because i love it they're in grocery stores throughout dane county and we'll visit a couple of them anyway enjoy this episode of oregon life glenway gardens with bill and betty All right, this is where the operation begins. We start the seedlings here in my living room. And these are the, the basil. And if you can see these little leaves here, the first ones that come out, they're called the cotyledons. And then as the plant gets bigger, it keeps shooting out new leaves in the center. And as that gets big enough, we'll be able to transplant it outside. We have basil, lemon basil, Thai basil, and parsley. And then down below here I have, these are my tomatoes for me, and more parsley, and then some thyme down here. And these are my flowers, some cosmos for myself. And then I have a little lettuce starting over there. And that would just be for us too. So I'll mix it with some of the things that are gonna be for us personally, and then the things that we're gonna sell. But all these other little plants will be things that we'll be transplanting outside and then taking to market. So now we're here in the hoop house and we bring our transplants out here usually around May 15th or a little bit later depending on the weather for that spring but usually May 15th is our frost free date. So then we'll transplant them into the beds. We order compost that we add to the beds so that we'll put that in before we plant the transplants. We'll put rosemary in those two beds and these will all be um, our basil. All right, so we're out in the rain here in the hoop house, and this time of the year, this is bed filling time, so our job is to get these beds ready to go, and mainly in this particular case, we're planting basil. Probably 85 to 90 percent of this greenhouse is basil, a little bit of rosemary, but this is a sensitive crop, so we want to have it inside, really susceptible to bugs. They love to eat it, and also very susceptible to the early spring temperature drops at night. So we, we put it inside to mitigate the temperature and keep it growing as we put the new plants in the bed. So we're leveling out the, the beds this year, which are all organic soil with some new uh, compost that we're putting in here just to keep it fresh again. The compost actually is our nutrient source. We don't put any other kinds of fertilizers in the basil. They will live off the compost itself just fine. Uh, and then we'll put the watering system back on where we can use drip watering to get them going. It'll take about a month to get the plants acclimated out here. They'll come in about next week at about four or five inches tall maybe, about the three, four or five leaf stage at the most. And we'll transplant them out here, which is gonna be a shock for them to try to get used to this environment of being outside and then they need to get rooted. So we will plant them and then uh, sometimes we will need to put row covers on, and that's why we have these hoops over the top uh, to keep the temperature from getting too low at night. 
and losing the whole crop. So it's a very sensitive crop for especially the first month until they get really going and rooted. Basil is probably 65% of what we sell at Glenway Gardens. We have quite a demand for it. And our difficulty is it's a very seasonal crop. We're not exactly very friendly to basil in Wisconsin with our temperatures, frost free date being May 15th. But when it is in season, it seems to really sell um, a lot. So we find, I think, Betty and I, that people are using it more and more in dishes. I think people are finding fresh ingredients to be more popular. They seem to think that, I, and I believe so, more nutritious. Plus, I think the flavorfulness of it in, in recipes, that people are home cooking a lot more and they want to have that flavor. And so I think the fresh ingredient market, I think, is, is expanding, I think, a bit because people are cooking again and trying to experiment with new dishes and trying new things. And as I tell most people, I said, when I grew up, we didn't use fresh ingredients on anything. I think we are on a farm and I didn't even know what basil even was. We never heard of it. But I think now people are becoming much more savvy in using fresh food ingredients in their cooking for flavor and for nutrition. So I am going to use my nice hori hori knife instead because I don't know where I put my trowel which is something that happens on the farm where you keep going from one place to the other. So I have two different varieties this year. Um, basil has been very susceptible to downy mildew and we grew a variety last year which is this one which is supposed to be resistant to it and we did very well and then we got actually an extra month and a half out of the season and then so I'm going to put this one in this bed, let's see, I want to keep them separate. So I think I had, a, well, just, just looked at my map to see what I was doing with that. And I think it's this one. And then, so I will, I suppose we could just start planting here if you like. So build, we have this drip um, irrigation. You don't want to get water on the leaves. So we have this drip irrigation. So it just waters in the ground. So I'm just going to, Put a couple in here. Normally I would have transplanted these into bigger pots and just as this season went, I just didn't get to it. So they would have been a little bit bigger because they would have had more time to grow and get bigger. So the, what you want to do is make sure that you have it in nice and tight so the roots can start to take hold because that will be the first process. The roots will do their thing. Then we'll start getting more growth on top. Well, we have a pressure regulated drip irrigation system that we have, which is uh, split for the left and the right um, raised beds. And so we have to run filters through it because it comes from our well and you get sand in it and so forth. And so once it goes down to the beds, it's pressure regulated to about 25 PSI so that the emitters, which are working right now, can drip just the right amount of water and it has enough pressure to get all the way to the end, which is from here about 80 feet. We're using all organic matter, and so organic soils tend to dry out very fast. They drain very easily and they dry out fast. And so one of the issues is they're very fertile, but they tend to not hold water for very long. So it's important to conserve water. And we tend to do that by only putting water where the root zone is, and that's why we have the irrigation system here. But also, we also tend to put uh, mulch over the top to try to conserve the water loss. All right, so now we're gonna plant the parsley here outside. I had a beautiful crop of parsley this year, and um, you have to bring it outside for the day and then bring it at night just to start to harden it off so it gets used to the temperature because it's been in our nice uh, cozy living room for so long. One night, I forgot to bring it back in. 
So thank goodness for Kopkes. <laughs> I could replenish my crop again by going and buying some of their parsley. I have a little bit of mine left that I started, but not as much as I had when I started. So another of the things that happen when you're farming, you forget things. And you, rabbits love parsley. So as you can see here, I've got one planted and we use these old pots, cut off the bottoms and we put that around the parsley to get it started because otherwise we'll come out here and this has happened before too. You planted it next morning, it is all gone. They just, and they don't even eat it all. They just nip it off and drop it down. And so then you have no leaves left on your plants. So we learned to take these old pots, we got these little stakes, keep them from blowing away in the wind, in the wind and just keep that secure until they get big enough and then the, when they get a little older then the bunnies leave them alone plus there's plenty of other things for them to eat. Mm -hmm.